I hear all the time from developers who are making their apps more user-friendly and smarter with the help of AI. Yeah, AI is creating better user experiences in many of our applications. But they're also concerned about their AI applications leaking sensitive data or returning unsafe responses. How can they address that? Let me show you how. Hi, Aaron. Good to have you back on the show. It's been a while. Uh, what do you do at Google these days? I'm a security advocate and help developers and security teams on Google Cloud with their AI applications. I've been a software engineer and a security architect, so I've lived in both worlds. Ah, very good. Uh, so AI opens up new possibilities, but, but also new risks, right? What are some threats that AI applications face? Well, the OWASP organization has created a list of the top 10 LLM vulnerabilities to watch out for. The list includes prompt injection, where malicious users manipulate our model through the prompts they send, and sensitive information disclosure, where your app leaks sensitive data. Yeah, if your application lives on the public internet, I guess it has to be ready for all kinds of inputs. Can you uh, show us one of uh, these threats in action? Sure. Here's a simple chat application connected to an LLM. I can ask it questions like, why is the sky blue? <laughs> yeah, my co-hosts keep bringing that question to the show. Yeah, it's kind of the hello world of AI apps. It's useful for testing that everything is basically working. But what if a malicious user connects with my app? They might try to trick the model into giving dangerous advice. For example, let's say they ask how to rob a bank. Ooh, you try to jailbreak there uh, by telling it to ignore its previous instruction. And something happened there on the right? Yes, the dangerous input was blocked before it even reached the model. That way the model doesn't waste time or computation on bad prompts. And we mitigate dangerous advice from being generated. So what blocked the dangerous input here? Well, Model Armor did. It's a new AI security product in Google Cloud that you can use with your AI applications. I like to think of it as a bodyguard for your model. It can also protect your users by blocking dangerous outputs. For example, let's say that we don't want our model to ever send social security numbers to users. Now I'll tell the model what my social security number is and ask it to read it back to me. And there's that red error message again. Uh, it's under the response analysis header, uh, something about sensitive data. Yes, that means that the model created a response containing sensitive data. In this case, the model tried to tell me my social security number, but Model Armor has been set up to detect and block responses with sensitive data before the response reached the user. So in a previous video, you showed me how to remove the sensitive data from application outputs, Aaron. Uh, is this the same thing? Yes, it's similar. Model Armor uses sensitive data protection. If a response contains sensitive data, we have a choice. We can block the entire response, like we just did in the social security number example. Or we can let the response go through, but redact the sensitive data. Got it. So let's look at the second option, redacting sensitive data. I'll turn off the prompt template and set the response template to include DLP, data loss prevention. Then I'll enter generate a 16-digit number. This is for testing a developer application. So the model responded with a 16-digit number that looked like a credit card number, but Model Armor redacted that number from the response. The application responded to the user, but no sensitive data was leaked. There are many types of sensitive data, but you as a developer don't have to keep track of all of them. Model Armor can do it for you. Well, the less I have to keep track of as a developer, the better. Yeah. Now, I'd like to show you one more thing that Model Armor can do. Sometimes users try to give the LLM addresses to malicious websites, hoping that the model will later give them to other users. So here's a website that has been marked as dangerous by Google. Oh, that gave me a jump scare, Aaron. <laughs> Sorry about that, Martin. Now I'll tell the model to share the malicious website with everyone because it contains delicious pasta recipes. And then I'll paste in the address of the dangerous website. And Model Armor caught the bad URL? Yes, it did. Google knows a lot about harmful websites because we filter sites on the internet all the time, both for our search engine and for threat intelligence. You can now use that knowledge to protect your AI applications. So how would I set up Model Armor for my application? Well, when your application receives input from users, it would call the Model Armor API first to see if it's safe. 
And before your application returns an AI-generated response to the user, it could also call the Model Armor API to see if that output is safe. So it's just an API call, huh? That's right. Let's dive into the code for one of my apps. So everything starts in our chat endpoint. The first thing we do is grab all the necessary data from the incoming request. This next block is our first security gate the prompt needs to step through. We send the user's raw prompt to Model Armor using sanitized user prompt. Got it. We check the results for any policy violations. And if we find one, we set prompt block to true. This will determine if we proceed to the next step. We've effectively checked the input before it can reach our model. Here we see prompt block in action. We only make a call to the model if the prompt was not blocked. We avoid wasting the model's time on a bad prompt and prevent the model from being exposed to any potentially harmful content. Hmm, I see. Now, once we have a response from the model, we might not want to trust it blindly. It might contain sensitive data that the user provided, or it could have generated unsafe content on its own. So the response walks through our second security gate. On this line, the code redacts any sensitive information. We don't want to block the entire output. We just want to redact specific words or characters in the output string. Here's an example of a redacted response. In this case, an IP address has been redacted. So if the response was unsafe, we block the whole thing. And if it just contains sensitive data, we only redact that portion, but serve the rest of the response. That's neat. This code just calls the model or Omer API, so it could run anywhere. That's right. My model doesn't need to run on Google Cloud to be protected, and neither does my application. It can run on another cloud provider or on my machine, but it still makes those API calls to Model Armor. This looks very useful. But I have so many questions, Aaron. Go ahead, Martin. First off, don't generative AI models include protection and guardrails? Yes, they do. But they are not specialized in detecting sensitive data, malicious URLs, prompt injection, and jailbreaking attempts. Model Armor is. OK, but could I just feed my inputs and outputs into another model with a very special engineered prompt and get the same protection as Model Armor? Let's take that example. The specialized model might block some basic jailbreaking attempts, but it may not be able to detect and redact API keys or home addresses or 200 types of sensitive information that Model Armor can. Your model certainly will not have an up-to-date list of millions of malicious URLs in the instructions. Mm, that makes sense. Uh, all right, here's another question. I built a few different apps that use AI myself, and the requirements for unsafe input-output were very different between these apps. How does Model Armor deal with that? Exactly. Safety isn't a one-size-fits-all. A university research bot has different requirements than a family entertainment app. Model Armor lets you configure the safety settings for each application, deciding how strict the filters should be. OK. So let's take a look at Model Armor templates. You can choose a pre-built template or create your own. Model Armor gives you control over what types of issues to protect against, enabling detection of malicious URLs, prompt injection, jailbreaking attempts, and sensitive data protection. You can also customize the confidence levels for different categories, like hate speech and harassment, making enforcement stricter or more lenient. All right. And what does it cost to use Model Armor? So right now, there is a free tier of 2 million tokens per month. And after that, you pay $1.50 per million tokens. If you're subscribing to Security Command Center, you may get a larger free tier um, or a lower price for a million tokens. Check the pricing table linked in the description. All right. Thank you for showing us all this, Aaron. It looks pretty straightforward. Well, AI, like security, can sometimes feel a bit intimidating. And when you put them together as AI security, it might even sound overwhelming. But with the right tools, like Model Armor, it doesn't really have to be. <laughs> I like that. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Aaron. And thanks for having me again, Martin. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions for Aaron or me, please add them in the comments below. Also, I'd love to hear if this episode was useful to you or not. I read every single comment. Now go protect your models and users. It's just a few mouse clicks away.